Hello everyone, I'm Typhoon and welcome to another lecture. In our previous lecture, uh, we took a deep dive into TCP synchronization scan, uh, covering how they work, how to execute them, and why they might fail in certain cases. We also examined Windows Defender and its effectiveness in uh, detecting and blocking some scans, proving that um, despite its reputation, it's not entirely useless when it comes to intrusion detection. Um, well, it won't stop the more stealthy scans, it does block obvious ones, making it basic but functional security feature. Today we will build on that knowledge with a more practical approach, instead of just discussing theory, we are going hands-on with a Wireshark to analyze real captured packets, we will see how a TCP synchronization scan behaves when there's a no interference uh, from an intrusion detection systems. This means we will be working with a controlled environment that um, like where no security measures are actively blocking or filtering our scan results. By the end of this lecture you will have a better understanding of how to capture packets in Wireshark, how to analyze successful TCP synchronization scan in real time, how to use Wireshark statistics tab to gain insight into the scan results. So let's get started here. Um, hide, uh, hide the windows, just one. And here we have, first let's start capturing packets in Wireshark. In this case, we are running Wireshark on an Ubuntu system. Uh, that will act as our packet sniffing machine. So if you are using Wireshark on a different system, make sure you have the necessary permissions to capture packets on the correct network interface. Now, let's quick the old Wireshark here. Now to capture packets, uh, open the Wireshark, select the appropriate network interface and hit the capture button. Remember, Wireshark captures everything happening on the network interface. So the more isolated our test environment, the cleaner our results will be. Now that we are capturing packets, let's launch our TCP synchronization scan using Nmap. On our Kala Linux machine, we will execute the Nmap SS um, and our target operating system IP address. So Nmap calls the Nmap tool, um, SS here performs a TCP synchronization scan, also called half open scan. And this is the IP address of the target machine we are scanning. In this case, it's Windows 11 machine. And here we are. You can see the uh, rise of the acknowledgement uh, here. Now, what does this scan actually do? It sends, a, it sends a synchronization packet to each port on the target system. If the port is open, the target with a, will respond with a synchronization acknowledgement packet. If the port is closed, the target responds with an RST, which is reset packet. If there's no response, the port is likely blocked by firewall. Now, what we will do is we will stop the scan. And here we have all the packets. Since the TCP synchronization scan doesn't complete the handshake, it is considered stealthier than a full TCP connect scan, which you can do with, instead of SS, you can do ST, which uh, fully establishes the connection before closing it. And once the scan begins, uh, watch the Wireshark, you should uh, start seeing packets um, appearing in real time. Uh, so here, I want to get the same result here you can uh, so we have scanned everything here you can see it's uh, gonna give us the same result I just wanted to see the ports here 135 one, 139 445 now uh, since Wireshark captures all traffic on the interface we will need to filter the results to focus only our nmap scan traffic now we will use tcp dot flags with we will start with tcp.flags acknowledgement zero so here um, you will see tcp.flags synchronization one um, this finds the packet with the synchronization flags set which initiates a connection 
and here we have the TCP flux acknowledgement zero this ensures that we are only seeing initial synchronization packet not completed handshake this filter will isolate our synchronization scan packets allowing us to analyze them without interference from the background network traffic so here uh, if we change this zero to one we will see the open ports here so we have the synchronization packets um, sent from kali to target uh, these are the packets that nmap is sending uh, here to probe uh, for open ports so they should be small and only contain this synchronization flag and here we have synchronization acknowledgement responses for open ports uh, if a port is open the target responds with synchronization acknowledgement so this means the port is available and accepting connections like you can see these are the same ports uh, so this means and we also have the rst uh, if a port is closed uh, the target response with an rst packet let's actually do the editing rst or res oops yeah so we'll use reset you can see we have a lots of resets so this will only uh, will be respond by a target machine if the uh, port is closed and the target system automatically will respond with the rst which is reset uh, packet so this tells us that port is present but not accepting connections and we also have the no response here uh, these are the four filtered uh, ports so if there's a no response it, it usually means uh, the firewall is blocking the connection and in a real world scenario this could indicate a protected service the, that requires further investigation um, like uh, you, if you remember we got no results no re uh, this uh, reset acknowledgement or synchronization acknowledgement in our previous lecture so and here we have the open ports port 80 you can see port uh, 443 port 139 port 135 and port 445 you can see the service description state is open and we can also see the mac address here so what this mean for your nmap scan so you, this means you can successfully identify the open ports on the target system the target responded responded with a synchronization acknowledgement meaning these ports are open and accepting connection so if your goal was stealth um, that responses could be logged by an ids or ips if monitoring is active and if these are the unexpected services further investigation is needed to understand their purpose and security risks and uh, here uh, we can also do this with zero uh, like if no acknowledgement packets follow this synchronization acknowledgement uh, the scan is indeed a stealthy scan which does not complete the handshake here and we will also use the Wireshark statistics in this lecture as well um, like we will go to statistics and we will select the conversations here and here we are so Wireshark's also conversations uh, statistic page is an essential tool for analyzing network traffic like it provides a summary of communication between devices you can see here we can see the present filter and so on and so forth and uh, we can also select the different protocol layers like ethernet ip version 4 ip version 6 tcp udp etc so this page helps identify who is talking to whom how much data is exchanged and the overall network activity during a packet capture session now let's break down each section of this conversation statistics uh, window now uh, the conversation uh, window displays a network conversations here 
um, like bidirectional communication between two endpoints. So these statistics are organized into tabs, um, each representing different protocol uh, layers. Uh, we have the Ethernet, uh, which is layer two, shows MAC addresses communicating over the network. We have IP version four, layer three, displays IP address level communication, IP version six, layer three, similar to IP version four, but for IP version six addresses, TCP, which is layer four, shows conversations between endpoints using TCP connections. And we also have the UDP, shows conversations between endpoints using UDP datagrams. In your capture, the Ethernet, IP version 4 and TCP tabs are selected by default. Um, so uh, yeah, you can also change this from this protocol tabs here. Now at the Ethernet layer, um, we have the MAC addresses at the IP version 4, IP version 6 layers, the, yeah, we will have the IP, IP addresses. And at the TCP UDP layers, um, they are the IP addresses combined with the port numbers. You can see port B, uh, port A. And yeah, here we have the uh, packets A, B. These are the number of packets sent from address A to address B um, and packet B A here and it should be in the left packets B A uh, number of packets sent from address B to address A uh, so this helps identify which devices is sending or receiving more data we have the bytes here like bytes A B this is that these are the total amount of data in bytes sent from A to B and B to A, uh, total amount of data in bytes sent from B to A. So higher values indicate large data transfers like file downloads, Windows streams. And if one site has significantly more traffic than the other, it could indicate a, an upload or download process. And we also have the total packets. Uh, these are the sum of the uh, sum of the packets uh, exchanged in a conversation. So this gives you an idea of the overall traffic load caused by this particular uh, communication. And we also have uh, percent filtered. So if a display filter is applied. Uh, this column shows the percentage of the total packets that match the filter. This is useful to see how significant the specific conversation is compared to the total network traffic. We also have the relative uh, start uh, or rel start uh, here. This is the time in seconds when this conversation started relative to the beginning of the packet capture. So it helps in time-based analysis like when the this device start communicating and so on and so forth. Now let's actually make the Linux disappear here. We also have the bits per second, uh, which bits seconds will be written like that something. So um, the bits per seconds A to B, now this means data transfer speed from A to B and bits B A data transfer speed from B to A. So this helps identify bandwidth intensive conversations. Uh, so higher bits per second values usually corresponds to file downloads like video streaming or large data uh, transfers here. So in our packet, uh, we have the conversation between these uh, MAC addresses uh, ending uh, with 86 and uh, 43. Uh, only one packet was exchanged, a uh, very short duration, like 0 0.82 seconds. So this could be a network probe or other solution protocol request or an initial handshake uh, here. We also have a conversation between uh, MAC address uh, ending uh, with 3 
B, uh, no, ending with BF and 5B. Uh, here you can see 1076 packets exchanged, uh, which totaling like 65 kilobytes. Duration is 20 seconds. Um, so traffic flow is one sided. Uh, you can see it's uh, like address packets A to B, but not B to A, zero. So a to B has zero packets, but B to A has 1,076 packets. Um, and uh, yeah, so this could indicate like um, network scanning. Uh, so, it, uh, But in some cases, it might also indicate a download or response heavy connection, like an HTTP response from a web server. And in this case, it was an Nmap scan, so uh, it in this case it will represent the target responding heavily to probes. Uh, so two packets was exchanged, totaling uh, 148 bytes here. Duration was 50 seconds, uh, which is very long for only two packets. And this could be initial handshake or just a slow connection here. And how to use this data? For, uh, for your analysis, like uh, you can identify suspicious traffic. Uh, you can, uh, in some cases, there you can find. In some cases, in un, uh, so in this, this in this case, it was just a nmap scan. But in other cases, it could be uh, you can do asymmetrical data flow. Uh, one side sending much more data, or vice versa. Um, you can also see this short but uh, large packet exchanges long duration but low activity conversations and um, high bitrate conversations you, you can uh, find uh, file transfers video streams and large downloads and yeah uh, that was basically how the nmap cell scan works uh, in the back doors so thank you for watching i'm Tifun, and i'm waiting you in next lecture